What up team, it is Murder Rank and we are back with a Barbarian video talking about Death Blow. I know, I know Barbarian has been in a quite bad spot this season, but we still made it work. This is, in my opinion, the best Death Blow variant you can make. Mostly, it was inspired by B-Dropper because that guy really knows his math. Made a few changes to make it feel good. What we're just going to do here is just show you gameplay because honestly, who cares what I'm talking about? Who cares what anyone's talking about? If it doesn't look fun, then it, I don't know. You're not going to have a good time. So this is what the build looks like in a 134 pit. There are a couple of variations of this build you can do. Honestly, it's just personal preference at this point. It's a couple glyphs. There are some builds that are ignoring the attack speed thresholds. What do I mean by that? We can go over a few basic things really quickly as I kind of shift through this video here so you can see the gameplay. The first thing being is Death Blow has attack speed caps. It's almost impossible to hit the third one without perfectly rolled gear. And in doing so, you're going to sacrifice a ton. And I mean a ton of damage. So instead of doing that, we aim for the second attack speed threshold, allowing us to Death Blow two times a second which is why we don't really care if we're hitting for, I don't know, 1 billion every once in a while because the numbers add up to much more than a billion. And on bosses, I've crit for 3 billion personally, which means it's 6 billion damage per second, not including the shockwave. So with that math alone, I've just determined this one was the best variant you can use for pushing pits. Now, since this is pretty boring, I did not complete this. As you can kind of see from the gameplay, the biggest downside to Death Blow is the overkill that we're using, the unique. It's just not large enough. It's this really small line that goes forward, and if they made it a 360 AoE or just tripled the size of the cone, this would be clearing 140s no problem. The hard part is I have to use doorways like you're seeing now, and strategically place myself in order to group up the mobs specifically another perfect example here one issue is steel grasp is still bugged it has been bugged since pretty much it came out where if you pull too much density the mobs will actually go behind you instead of all clumped up in front of you if they fix this again death blow will be able to skyrocket now high can push in the pits if that's something you're even interested in so now that we went over the pits we can kind of get to the nitty-gritty in the boss part this is where i ran out i think i had let's see let's go for the exact numbers here so just past 50 percent. i don't know 35 40 percent by the time the timer goes down to zero if i played perfectly could i clear this yes i think the cap on this is going to be 135 136 maybe 137 if you have absolutely perfect gear which that's a whole other story now all right now that i showed you the martial version this is the version that uses revenge what does revenge do it pretty much just gives you more boss and elite damage the more times the enemies hit you, you do up to 8% multiplicative damage. That will add up. You will see some pretty nice and big numbers. Again, if we use Steel Grasp, we have to drop Warcry. What does Warcry do? It gives us more damage. I'm not sure why people are so anti-Warcry. All you really have to do is throw on the Wild Bolt, which pulls the mobs towards you, which I have done. And I have completed a 133 with 5 minutes left. Do I think it's viable for higher than that? Probably not, because some of the, I guess, extra mechanics from the bosses, specifically Uber Lilith, can one-shot you if you're using Wild Bolt instead of Prudent Heart. So now that you kind of already know the gameplay loop of what this all looks like, let's head to the boss fight where I'm using Revenge instead of Martial. As we can see, the timer is much closer on the boss. I don't know if the RNG just worked out to where I got a better boss here, but as we can see, much more boss damage with this build. I prefer this personally, and you're about to see me face tank pretty much everything from this Lilith. This build is unkillable. You just can't kill it no matter what with the current setup. The only way this build can die is if you 
go to the three shout version, which I would recommend for tier eight hordes. Now that we've gone over that, let's take a look at the gear. We do have Crown of Lucian. There's not going to be a build planner. I'm lazy this season, so just bear with me. Max rolls into maximum life. You could go cooldown if you want to. Don't really need to. The next one is this chess piece, which is so frustrating to play with. You need a triple masterwork and invigorating fury on your chess piece. If you do not have this, the build does not work. I'm not going to be making versions of this build that work for undergeared characters because it's really easy to get that going. All you have to do is swap the pants, get Invigorating Fury to at least rank 9 or 10, and then you have permanent Fury uptime with the ring that you will see momentarily. Next, we have the gloves here. I've seen people try messing with Fists of Fate or Endurant Faith. Definitely don't run Endurance Faith. You don't need that. That's, I don't know why people are doing that. Core skills and attack speed are so powerful for this build. You would be crazy not to look for gloves like these. Outbursts is if you want to play the revenge version. If you don't, honestly, just swap that with whatever you want. Baseline health is probably the best since you're permanently critting and permanently overpowering. The next piece is going to be, we're just not showing the rest of the gear here. Kind of unlucky. But this is the major swap I was talking about before. This build has revenge. I think I'm just highlighting why revenge is relevant to the gloves here. Then I'm going to go back to the rest of the gear. If you wanted to swap in Marshall, you can do that. I'm looking for it right now. And this is what the swap's going to look like. Hopefully I do this live. Yes, I do. Okay. So you take these points out. You relocate them down. One more point and bam, we have 40, 40 into Marshall and that is how you change the build. And since we left off on the legs, let me show you the legs I'm using here. You only need one roll pretty much into Call the Ancients cooldown. It is going to be capped at 12.5 seconds unless you use Marshall, then you can have 100% uptime. 12.5 seconds is enough for just under 50% uptime. A lot of people like to say it's 50%. However, there is a delayed animation when you do use the skill. And that subtracts just under one second of the damage you can be doing during that time. So that's why I don't think it's truly 50% uptime without the martial glyph. But the pants are fairly straightforward and they're pretty cheap because you don't really need the GA roll on anything. If you get it, it's nice, but you just really want 71%. Call the Ancients cooldown, which would be two Masterworks or one, depending on non-GA. Next item we have here is going to be Yen's Blessing. Doesn't matter what you roll on these. High percentage on the boots. Resource gen is nice. All stats, of course. And finally, we have Overkill. That's the main part of the build. Let's try not to skip over that too fast here. Getting back to Overkill. All right, so here we have Overkill. This is plus 16 ranks to death blow. There are people who claim that the shockwave percentage does not matter. Those people are crazy. 45% would be ideal. It would make your clear faster. It'll make your bossing faster because when you're hitting as fast and as hard as this build currently hits, you just want to do as much damage as possible. And there's a huge difference between 38 to 45%. The next item is the third blade. This is another required item. Pretty much everything here is required for the build if you wanted to get it going at this level. You want... The main effect of this skill, making your weapon mastery skills also core skills, also is the key word, not instead, dealing 70% of normal damage, and making the fury cost reduced by 5 for any additional charges. You don't want additional charges, you want the fury to cost exactly as it's supposed to, because you want 200 maximum fury total, so you can spam it without any issues. For this, I just stack strength because I am not armor capped. Like I said, this build is unkillable. You cannot die, so even me not running armor cap does not matter. The next weapon we have is kind of an OP one. It's going to be the Doom Bringer. If you can get a GA roll on max life, like most people have, you are set. Your damage is going to be much, much higher than mine. In a perfect world, I'd sit around and re-roll the max life masterwork three times. That would also be a very significant damage boost. I just have not gotten around to it because I've been playing other classes. And then finally, we have the grandfather. We have three rolls into max life here. Instead of max damage, because this is an overpower build, and flat max life is going to be a major, major benefit with all the health percent nodes we can take. 
Moving on to the only ring in this build, Life Attack Speed Overpower. Attack speed you're looking for the cap. I believe it's 139% attack speed is what you're looking for. And I like to cap my damage while berserking on the gloves if I can instead of crit damage because that saves more nodes on the Paragon board which I will go through in this video in depth. Since crit damage is no longer multiplicative, even though we do have Grandfather, it's still worth putting damage while berserking on your gloves because you get around, I believe it was 40,000 extra health just from Paragon health nodes by being able to skip damage while berserking. If 40,000 doesn't sound like a lot of health to you, it's a lot. For this, you want the Starlight Circle on this. This is what makes the build online. Highly recommend resource generation while you're going. I have not noticed a difference between swapping it off later on. You could go for Call of the Ancients cooldown to get that 12.5% cap. I believe I'm at 12.9. So I'm really not worried about 0.4% cooldown reduction on Call of the Ancients. I would prefer the resource gen just in case I run short in a strange scenario. The next ring that makes it possible for us not to stack crit chance is going to be Ring of the Red Fear. Every 100 Fear you spend, the next death blow pretty much has a guaranteed crit and it deals bonus crit damage. You can use this on Hammer of the Ancients to proc the talent for Hammer of the Ancients that makes your damage increase since you overpower. Or you can use this on death blow. You're not really looking at this or worried about this at all. Final item is going to be banished lords. Ideally you want a GA on attack speed. And ideally you want to triple crit the attack speed. So you can hit that two times threshold. I believe I'm 1% over with the current master work you see. So this is going to be a heavy investment build. But I will say it is fun to play. And if you want something that's pretty decently stronger than whirlwind. The next thing to go over is we have two-handed axe expertise here. We have overkill assigned to death blow. Overkill is also assigned to hammer the ancients. Moving on to the paragon board, we have the starter board here. First glyph, wrath. The next glyph we have is might. That's in the carnage tree. Warbringer, infinite fortify with the crusher. 20x multiplier and overpower damage. Then we have Ire here for more berserking damage. That's in the Bone Breaker tree. Next, we have Blood Rage. We capped out that. As you can see, if you look around, we have a bunch of health nodes that are very beneficial to us. And finally, we have Decimator with the Revenge. And I talked about before how this is the tree where you can swap Revenge for Marshall. The last thing to discuss is going to be the skill tree. Now, I believe in this showcase, yes, I have something wrong here. As you can see, if I'm circling my mouse here, I have cut to the bone. I did try some bleed variants of this. They are not that good. So what I can just do is go in game here and show you the proper skill tree, which is going to be this two in bash, as little as possible, hammer the ancients. We want violent. That's the main reason we take it. We have Health, Rallying Cry, Extra Fury, Challenging Shout, 1 into Raid Leader. You don't really need this, but you can take it if you want. We have Infinite Vulnerability because your Death Blow procs this each time and you're hitting twice a second. Slaying Strike is the most OP multiplier in the game. Something's clearly broken with it, making it do more damage than it should. Of course, we have 30 ranks to Death Blow itself. Next, we have Call of the Ancients. If you really wanted to, you can get rid of Supreme Call for the extra fury here because it's not really needed. And you can put one into Warcry. This way, you can swap between Steel Grasp and Warcry when you get to bosses. This might sound like a small difference, but if you're running the Martial setup, this is two additional seconds off of your Call of the Ancients, which is going to be huge, giving you the highest uptime of attack speed and the damage bonus. Outside of that, as mentioned before, nine ranks of Invigorating Fury is going to be the minimum. If you cannot do it with just one Legendary, use two for now. Unbridled Rage is ideal. If everything's too expensive for you, you can swap to Unconstrained and Wrath of the Berserker. You will actually see higher numbers. You will be hitting a billion much quicker than if you go the Unbridled Rage route. But the problem is this cooldown is very long and doesn't have a unique such as Ariats making the cooldown drop all the way to 12 or even 6 seconds. 
So here's the build. Hopefully you enjoy it. Here's some kind of outro gameplay of a tier eight. And of course, me dying to a desecrator. Gotta love that bug. I know I said it's unkillable, but this is me running the Wild Bolt version. So keep in mind if you run Wild Bolt, desecrators can still one shot you if they just spam that fire ability over and over again and you do not see it on the map. Other than that, things are pretty chill. Again, I want to clarify this is the version without steel grasp. So we're just using wild bolts to pull in enemies and. I don't know. It works out pretty well. I have no problem farming. This is not. This is probably the worst class to farm tier eights with outside of a group, because what you really do is you kill Hellborn very fast and you kill the bosses very fast. Outside of that, you're really missing that AOE. I've seen some people try to incorporate AOE, but to mess up your whole build just to add more AOE for farming tier eights may not be ideal. It's probably worth it just to make another class like a major druid for speed farming. Or if you're a diehard barbarian, bleed whirlwind is the best current iteration and variation of whirlwind that you can use. I know a lot of people are on the Ramaladni train right now, but it is bugged with fists of fates. I don't know if people know that or not. If you don't, now you know. So this is what the tier 8 bossing looks like. If they all stack up by the boss, life's pretty good. If they don't, as we can see now, life's pretty bad. So the middle boss is just going to get nuked. And then I'm going to have to go one by one to the rest of the bosses until everything dies. One thing I will say about this build that I do like is it makes you a better player. It makes you more aware of where you're positioning because of how ridiculous and small the... Uh, shockwave is for death blow so that is one thing to consider if you plan on investing in this build and playing it for the remainder of the season you will 100 percent become a better barbarian by playing this build there's just no way you won't unless you give up on the build because the positioning has such a heavy requirement and it makes you really learn how to use walls and all of that to your advantage learn the patterns of the bosses so when they jump backwards they're jumping back into walls like we kind of just saw there and outside of that, that is the showcase of this build. Like I said before, I'm sorry there's no planner, but if you scroll through the video, I'm sure you'll be able to find everything perfectly fine. That's it for now. Sorry for no face scan. Maybe we'll do one on the next video or something. I know it's been a while. Look forward to seeing all the comments and let me know what builds you guys are playing this season. Who's staying true to Barb? Who's moved on to other classes? Who is uh, abusing Druid like I am? who thinks Sork is still the best like most other players do. Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this content, subscribe with the like button, and I will see you all in the next upload.